Uh, hello guys, so today in this tutorial, I'll be explaining you about NumPy and I'll give you a brief introduction about uh, pandas. So yeah, today's class will be really interesting because you will jump into this field of data analytics. So it's a really interesting class. So NumPy, pandas. I don't want to uh, uh, finish off pandas immediately by today itself. So one more class will be there. One, two or three classes will be there in pandas. So yeah, so we'll go slow. Don't worry. Uh, every, uh, you learn everything that is required for the foundations of machine learning. And uh, we have onboarded one more mentors. Uh, so we have total now of four mentors. So in the next uh, class, I guess, or next to the next class, you will get other mentors will be mentoring you so yeah so yeah so today's class will be uh, so today's class i'll be teaching you about pandas and numpy so before jumping into pandas i'll teach you a little bit about numpy what is numpy and why is it used so basically how the python programming works so generally when you code in python programming uh, so it automatically does all those garbage collections and all those things so that's why the processing time of this Python uh, decreases, right? So when you do some kind of small uh, additions, multiplications, uh, and, uh, and similar same addition multiplication in C++, there'll be not so, so much notice, uh, you won't notice that much change in this uh, processing time. But when you do some kind of large error manipulations, and uh, when you do some kind of a, like, if you are doing it in a, in a big data, uh, you are doing this manipulation to a big data, then this, uh, this processing change difference is noticeable. So NumPy just figured it out that, uh, so yeah, NumPy figured it out that this is a major issue in Python programming. Uh, that's why they converted this Python uh, programming basic uh, array manipulations and all and uh, into a some kind of uh, like very system level programming so i mean what they do they generally convert your code into some kind of uh, machine learning machine languages so in that way the code runs really fast so numpy medium let's go with introduction to numpy so numpy medium if you search you will get the what why should we use numpy so this is the article really famous so you can refer this so it pretty much answers your questions. So why we are using NumPy? Mm. So yeah, the the major use case of NumPy is like when you do multi-dimensional array uh, manipulations or met matrix data structures. So uh, that's the major use of NumPy. And this NumPy library is used by all the big libraries. So if you are doing, even if you are doing some kind of Okay, Ratnesh Mishra has joined right now. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, thing is, whenever you want to do data, I hope oh, share system preferences. Uh, yeah. So, what happens when you do data, uh, data analytics? So, there you have you have tables of data like. Uh, you have database data from uh, ordered data of uh, GVs or TVs. So what you do, you run your code on that data. So if your code is really slow, then it will take days and years. So that's why people uh, figured it out that they can achieve high performance uh, if they convert this code into some kind of uh, machine learning. So NumPy is a wrapper around the library implemented in C. So it converts your Python code into C code. So that's why your code runs really fast. So you can actually uh, rely heavily on this NumPy. So not only you, there are big, big companies that rely on NumPy. So even you see that Pandas library, uh, Pandas is a really famous library if you are doing stock manipulations and stock, and stock analysis. And then if you want to do uh, some kind of, if you want to handle order data, so pandas is a really uh, good library and the pandas underlying principle works on numpy so panda is you highly dependent on numpy so yeah uh, 
so that's why I wanted to give you a brief intro about NumPy. So uh, we'll start by installing NumPy. So in order to install the NumPy in your system, you have to run this command, which is pip install NumPy. So uh, this will install NumPy in your system and you can access it through your Python. For uh, Collab, you don't have to do anything because the Collab already knows that some of the majorly used libraries, uh, uh, NumPy, TensorFlow, T Torch, Pandas, these majorly used libraries are already inbuilt in Google environment. So you don't have to worry of installing this library. Uh, then when it comes uh, to how to use NumPy, you have to do import. Okay, import is simple. Uh, it's a simple, uh, I mean, kind of, uh, it's a command which will import the library from your library path. So if it has, if this, this environment has pandas installed, then it, sorry, it, if it has numpy and pandas installed, it will automatically import into this code. So if I do import pandas as pretty, so basically what I'm doing, I'm importing, uh, sorry, pandas, no, no, pi. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just calling numpy as a np. np means why, why to write numpy every time. Uh, it is a very big, uh, I mean, it's a five letter. So I wanted to uh, make it as two letter. So I made it an NP. So now NP is my NumPy library. I can do whatever thing, what I want, whatever thing uh, with this NumPy. So uh, I'll start with the basic operations. So uh, the basic operations are like, how do you define arrays inside NumPy? So NumPy has this multi-dimensional arrays, which can be used for uh, manipulations. So first of all, we have to understand the data structure of NumPy. So NumPy, you can create NumPy arrays using NumPy. So our first array, so first array, np dot, uh, so NumPy dot array. And basically you can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten whatever you wish to. So your first array is created. Now if you console.log that first array, you can see it will say numpy array and it is, has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let me see what it comes when I do this. Maybe it doesn't work. So I don't know how it works. Let, I have used it long back. So basically what that value function does, okay, it doesn't work. Okay, so this is how you define the array. Now you can do many operations on this array. Okay, so my charger just fell down. That's fine, okay, I uh, will continue. So, so now we want to create two dimensional array. So how to create two dimensional array, you already know how to create in C. So for NumPy also, it's similar to that. Um, Okay. Uh, now, if you run this first array, you will see the two dimensional array is created. Uh, if you want to see the shape of this first element, then you have to put numpy.shape, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, so basically how to define the data structure of numpy is very simple. Uh, you have to create an array using np.array. Just remember the function. And uh, if you're, even if you don't remember, I'll tell you one more way to remember all this. Uh, numpy documentation so numpy docs so not so not only numpy has its docs every library in this world has its docs so uh, yeah you can use this 1.18 manual so it's the newest one so if you want to define error so you can search for error numpy error so it tells you how to use this numpy array 
Okay, so you can actually understand from this itself. So their object, object is array-like. So an array, any object expo exposing the array interface, an object whose array method returns an array or any nested sequence. So the first thing which goes into NumPy array function is the object or the array. So if you pass the array, it will automatically convert that array into a NumPy array. So always remember how to use this NumPy array. Uh, either you do this way or this way. There is one more way. So that and all, it's written here itself. Okay. Uh, yeah. So one more thing you can pass in, you can pass in data type. So these all are the attributes that you can pass in or the parameters that you can pass in uh, in, in inside this function so in case you want to you want to uh, make your data type so so if you see right now it's an integer data type right so i guess shape what all functions are there let me see okay so so yeah, so many functions are there. You can see min, max, mean, and many things is there. So, 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 so there is many functions in NumPy. I guess it works. Yeah. So basically, uh, NumPy array. You can see the shape by SAPE. That shape means. It will give you the dimension of that NumPy array. You can see that it's a two dimension, a two cross two matrix. So you can see here that the it is a two cross two cross two matrix. So that's why it shows two comma two. So if your dimension is uh, if your dimension is this, then it will show something else. It will show this six comma zero. So it's only six. So consider it as six cross one matrix. So yeah. Uh, basically, this using num, num, np dot array, you can define the numpy array. Uh, now, now the other way around defining this numpy array, it's uh, np dot empty. So, so if you see, uh, so basically. What this does, this creates an empty NumPy array. So it automatically, uh, uh, so what happens? It takes six. So these arrays are of array structure. So right, so this is a C code right now. When it compiles to C, it's a C code, right? So when an array is created in C, so basically it's a stack in your memory, and um, the memory might not be empty or might be empty so it totally depends on your luck so when you do this command what it takes it takes six uh, memory uh, stacks from uh, so yeah it takes six elements from your memory stack and uh, it yeah and it converts that into that array so here you can see it gives you some random number so don't worry these numbers are actually the previously used uh, stack so from there itself, this number has uh, came in, inside our array. But don't worry. For now, if you create, if you want to create your NumPy array, if you want to create, for example, uh, 100 NumPy array, so you can use this empty. Wherever there is uh, using this, you can actually create a hundred uh, array of shape 100, and uh, this will be a float, and uh, and the numbers will be random depending upon the memory usage memory used in the previous cases so wherever the memory that uh, that memory is empty so then in there it takes the memory and uh, converts into an array so so that's why if the memory was previously written as 3.36 so uh, it will take that number and it won't edit anything it just allocates this array, array to that memory pool so similarly, if you want to create two dimensional, you just have to give two cross two. So I hope this works. No, it doesn't work because uh, here what happens, it considers as a two parameters instead of the dimension it considers as a parameter. So you have to give two comma two inside a bracket. Right now your array will be created as a two dimensional array. See one, 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 zero. 
So that's how you create this uh, empty NumPy array. Now one more is the NumPy dot once. So, so what this NumPy dot once does? Okay, I uh, will not edit this thing. I'll create one more. What does one NumPy dot once does? It not only allocates memory to your array, uh, but it converts your memory into one. So all the numbers will be at once. So so instead of random numbers, it is one. Uh, similarly, you have four zeros. So if you want to convert your mem array into zeros. So if you want to see now, everything will be zero, right? So that's how you create your array, a multi-dimensional array, whatever you want, you can create it very easily. So it's really easy to use NumPy. In case you want to do some kind of error manipulations, you can ease, easily use it. And it's pretty much fast. For example, I want to show you how fast it is. So I'll import time. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll take two arrays and uh, we'll do a little bit of manipulations in that arrays. So for example, first array will be Uh, array one will be mm, simple address i in let's take this number as a thousand because uh, this is creating me an array in python data structure okay so so yeah this array one is a python array and I will convert this array as an array one numpy. So this will be numpy dot array. So we are just testing out its speed. So now we'll test it out. So this is a uh, range of array and uh, this is also an array. Both are same array. Similar event error, not the same because this is a Python error and that is a uh, pandas error, uh, sorry, numpy error. So now we'll do small operations on this and uh, we'll figure it out uh, which one runs fast. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, for that, we'll import time. Uh, time dot time. Okay, it shows in millis, so you can actually get time in millis. So we'll go first. Before, after. Okay, and uh, after before, and what you can do, we can print out before. Minus after. So it shows minus. Okay. Uh, after minus before, basically. Because this is bigger. So it's near about. It's very less time. So we'll figure out how much time both the error manipulation takes. So what we'll do, we'll just uh, sum it up. So for this, how to sum it up is like uh, for the first one. We'll do like this for dot, dot equal to zero and for i in range, not range, i in dot plus equal to i okay we don't want the how much is the total we just want to get the total and uh, time before that and after that and and second one is instead of this we'll do uh, 
uh, yeah, we'll see the time, how much it takes. And in case it takes very less time, so you can see this much is the millise uh, it, it's it's in mid, uh, Unix time is in second, so this much second it is taking for the previous one. And for this one, it takes a little bit less, so we'll increase the data, uh, data size. Uh, we'll increase it to 1000. And let's see how it works. Okay, so we just increase the data size and uh, we'll have import that. Uh, we'll see how much time it takes. It takes 0 0.1 second. And how much time it takes? You can see there is a pretty much difference in this number. Uh, for both the case, what is the sum? Let's see. Let's print this and print this also. So we we'll print this also. Yeah, so let's run again. 4999. You can see the results are same, but the time taken is really uh, for this it takes 0 0.1 second, for it takes 0 0.001 seconds. So uh, you can get an idea like how this, how effective this NumPy library is this. So when the data, when the size of the data increases, for Python it's linearly, uh, the computation time is linearly, uh, uh, change, so linearly changes. But for this uh, NumPy it doesn't change really linearly. Uh, I get it's logarithmic, I don't know. So maybe that logarithmic, I don't know, I have to see in this. But yeah, you can see that the, the, the time, uh, the time taken for this is pretty much bigger than this. What is the ratio of the time taken? Uh, so what we can find, figure it out, like we can take the ratio. Seventeen times faster, so you can get the idea how fast it is. So that's why NumPy is used in all these uh, manipulations of arrays. So I gave you an idea how to use NumPy. Uh, uh, like, okay, someone is asking question. I guess will time taken for execution depends on the size of the array. Yeah, so it totally depends on the size of the array. Mm. Uh, so basically, if the size of the array is more, the Python time will increase so in case you are dealing with small data sets not that large then i guess numpy is a not a good option uh, but in case you want to deal with the long uh, big data arrays uh, big uh, big sized arrays so then you, you will be needing this numpy thing so yeah with this you have got an idea how fast this numpy array uh, the next part is uh, we'll little bit see into numpy's functions so some of the functions are like Random functions. So you want to generate NumPy. Uh, I mean, uh, so you want to generate NumPy uh, random. So np dot Oh uh, yeah. So NumPy dot random dot random. What it does? Uh, it creates similar kind of array. Uh, but but it gives a random numbers. You can see that these numbers uh, ranges from zero to one, and uh, will be used for when you want to do some kind of. Uh, uh, I mean, how to explain? Okay, uh, cool. So right now it's not necessary, but yeah, in case you want to do some kind of. Uh, Changes or changes where have I used last? I forgot the use cases, but this function is used many places. So, in this way, you can create a random arrays and it's really useful. So, yeah, that's how you create a random and you can give a normal distribution to this random also and create a random normally distributed 
random numbers. So you for that you have to copy this paste there, uh, and instead of random you can put normal. And uh, uh, for normal you have to give three elements. I guess size. So initially if the random uh, um, one and one I guess I don't know. Let's see how it, how much it is. So size is five comma four now. Size. Yeah, so you can see that the random variable, uh, the I guess mean is inside. Okay, wait, wait a second. We have to see the documentations. So how to put the numbers there? Uh, so that's the normal function. Uh, you can check the documentation here you can see uh, mean or uh, the center is uh, given in the first uh, pa uh -huh, like parameters then the standard deviation okay so the mean and the center is given as the first so for this the mean is zero and the center uh, and the standard deviation is one i guess and uh, so that's why the default is zero and one so you can put here uh, 10 comma one so what is mean and standard deviation you guys already know i guess if you uh, have done like uh, in 11 12th so then you might know so yeah that with this you have you can draw normally distribute your uh, prob probabilities generate like your random numbers so yeah that's how you create this normal distributed random numbers and uh, okay so with this you pretty much got an idea how to create a random mint so let's one more it's there it's a random mint Okay, the idea behind uh, random int, it will generate 0 to 1. Okay, it will generate uh, 0 to 9 any integer. So it will create one integer, random integer. So yeah, you can grieve it like this and you can give it a size. Size of 10. So it will create an error of 10 with random int from 0 to, ranging from 0 to 9. So you can put the range here and uh, define it from where to where you want to go. So if you want to play uh, rock, paper, scissor, or if you want to roll a dice, you can do like this. Uh, actually start from zero to seven, then you'll get a dice roll. So yeah, you can get 13, okay. You can get a dice or one six one 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 six five five five. Uh, yeah. So you got an idea how to use random int and uh, random normal, random random. So there are other functions you can check the documentations. If I cover everything out of this, then we might not uh, finish it in two two months. So yeah, it will take more than this. Yeah, you can check there. And uh, uh, next thing is uh, how to figure it out the sh uh, the shape of the array. So So for taking out the shape of the array, you have to do length, just like Python. You can take out the length of the array, and uh, that's how you get the length of the array. And uh, and if you want to get the dimension of the array, dimension will be like this: uh, length of the shape. Uh, sorry, length of the. Sorry, 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 sorry. Dimension will be length of the shape of an array. So shape, you already know how I have founded it out. So that's how you define the shape. And uh, dimension is one because it's a, uh, it's not, it's a single dimension matrix. So yeah, that's why it shows one. And uh, what can be done next? Uh, next is, um, uh, you can set a seed variable, uh, seed and all I'll explain later. Random minutes, it's it's done. Okay, so basically you can do sum, sum across. So if you have two dimensional matrix, so if you consider two dimensional matrix for this first array, so let's see how does the first array looks. And if you do sum, and if you define the axis equal to one. 
you will do uh, okay it does some error uh this is a single single dimensional array so we can't create this we can't get it uh, okay let's create a multiple dimensional array yeah multiple dimensional array uh, now you can see it, it gets you a sum of uh, x is 0 that is the first dimension uh, if you, let's see what is the array you see 1 2 2 3 so if x is equal to 1 it does 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 3 right so it's this 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 so uh, the it does the sum of x is equal to 1 or the uh, for consider it is a uh, x y plane so it does the sum of uh, y axis when it does x is equal to 0 x is equal to 1 and when you do x is equal to 0 it does x axis so 1 plus 2 3 and 2 plus 3 5 so both way I guess it's the same number yeah so that's the issue it is creating and let's create one proper number numpy dot uh, let's create from 0 to 10 or you can write 10 instead and you can give it a shape uh, 10 cross 10 I guess you will get 10 cross argument shape is not there I do this and see let's see it works low to high so, comma, 10. yeah so it created some random error and let's see what is inside the array so this is the array 10 cross 10 and if i do let's not make it so huge so that calculation is really tough uh, let's make it 0 to 3 3 cross 3 so this is 3 cross 3 mat matrix and uh, if i do num numpy dot first sum equal to x is equal to 0 uh, you can see that it adds this this and this when I do x is equal to 1 it adds this this and this so yeah you can get you can you can understand that if you put axis you can uh, uh, using axis you can find out the addition it's the sum of the uh, single x uh, sing, uh, single row or column so if you want to get the sum of the column uh, sum of this column so you put x is equal to uh, 0 and if you want to get the sum of the rows so you put x is equal to 1 so just remember whenever you are doing uh, 0 means uh, so 0 means the this and 1 means this so you can uh, actually do it and understand it pro properly so I would suggest do it I don't want to uh, confuse you guys in this first tutorial itself next um, there is much more left in numpy i thought i will cover, cover the numpy get to do partners but today i couldn't complete so don't worry tomorrow again we'll have a session in the same time itself uh, maybe if you want to shift it to before and after just let me know uh, in the group and uh, we'll uh, eventually decide a single time and uh, we'll have this next continuation of this session and you guys please go through this note okay so you guys please go to go through this note uh, because uh, if you don't understand here then it will be really problematic for you in the future and please go through this note and let me know if you have any doubts and we'll we'll see up tomorrow again in the same time all right so you have any doubt you can uh, comment me right now itself or directly you can ping me uh, look into this collab and collab uh, this this uh, notebook and uh, we'll see up tomorrow in the same time all right then bye good night see up